Alright, so there's the first Scorpion pop, there he goes in one hit, and I can see an Ao Ming out in the distance. Now, my 40% death mark additional damage is not ready, but BAM! That's what it still looked like. Now, with the damage boost running, this is what'll happen then. Boom! What's up, friends? This is Money, and you're not going to believe what I'm going to show you today. Not even Max Weber's Mark II level 6 and 7 with the Pascal drone and the legendary pilot John or Orsted on the new Pathfinder robot probably being the most insane broken sniper that the game has seen this far. And we have seen Crisis with Gauss, we have seen <laughs> uh, Dagens with the Volt and so on. But this, I think, tops it all. With the ability of the Pathfinder and the Legendary Pilot combined, allowing you a passive shield break whenever you need to, also locking the enemy down conveniently and adding a 40, I think, percent damage death mark to him. That goes for you and for all your teammates as well. And then when you score a kill under the influence of that effect, you're going to get a lasting until the end of the match damage and speed bonus. Okay, now remember that getting a kill with the uh, Pascal drone also gives you a lasting damage bonus of up to 35% until the end of the match plus the 7% you get by base. That is 42% of additional damage output provided by just the, Castro uh, the Pascal drone. Then we have the, the nuclear amplifier that charges over the course of the match, currently at 45% of its up to 85, 90, I don't know. Uh, so you can do up to, I think, six, almost 70% more damage with this thing when it's fully charged. Uh, so yeah, basically what it means, we're starting this insane sniper with 1.0 or 100% of our current uh, regular base damage output. And as, you, as we progress through the game, making kills, charging the nuke amps, and so on, we're gonna be able to ramp this up to an absolute ridiculous amount of damage, additional damage boosts. That's just passively active for you all the time. And, and, and that is crazy, because let's just calculate this. We have 70 around or something like this percent damage coming from the nuke amps alone. One nuclear amp when it's charged. Um, then we have 42% from the Pascal drone when it's fully opted in and charged, okay? That goes on top. That's already 120% uh, or 110, right? So, now, then we have uh, the Pathfinder robot that can, I think, stack up to five times a damage boost of, oh man, five, six percent, seven? I'm not sure. So you can for sure get yourself to around 150% or 140% damage output. Um, not counting in the pilot skill, power man, 20% faster recharge on your weapons, and so on, right? So <laughs> this is seriously becoming one of the most insane snipers the game has ever seen. And that on a weapon base that ignores resistance uh, with the gauss volt Weber config, right? Um, just imagine what that means to uh, Titans that, you know, unless, of course, once they have charged their repair amps, even this weapon can't bypass the resistance anymore. But um, before that, you saw what we just did with that Omei. That was like a three hit kill, dude. And uh, yeah, living legend easy. Okay, now you see 95 on the le left hand side of the screen. Sometimes it shows up. That is the maximum amount of stacks for the nuclear amplifier running. Now, I can't shoot this guy yet, but once my shield break is running, I can pop him through his shield in one hit. Saw that Skyros? He was not in ball state, he was unfolded with his shield out that I can bypass, and so he got a, he was a one hit kill. Easy. And the difference is so insane. You start to play the setup, and you do like, decent damage. You end, at the end of your round, when you shoot, your, shoot to kill, Every shot is pretty much a kill. We've seen this in the yesterday's video too, during the um, in the live stream of the Vortex play, where I played this setup with Vortex too, lockdown, shield break, and Vortex. Heck yeah, what a combo, right? And we did this. If you haven't yet seen it, top right corner is the live stream for you. Uh, you can check out the whole hour and something a minute's live stream um, and uh, and see what I'm talking about. Like things just die in one hit, and it seems like I don't even need all my Vortex for it. And look at this, that was just a freaking Titan there, dude! 60% damage against the Titan! Are you kidding me? Here, look! Another Salvo and the Arthur is pretty much done! The only reason he's not dying, dying now is po pointing his physical shield towards us. 
Dude, that is something else. <laughs> this is really the most ridiculous sniper setup I've seen uh, in a while. But of course, let's let's add it all up. Why is it this ridiculous? It's first off, you have a lockdown per button press, the 40% damage boost from the death mark that we have to count into uh, whenever we fire and we, we press that button. Um, plus all the other damage boosts I just mentioned to you. So we end up with like 250% damage output or, or, or something like this when we want to have that. And that, uh, and that conveniently adding up to it just while you're playing the game, right? With an instant damage arriving weapon build where you have little chance to avoid the damage. The moment you get hit, all the damage has already been done. So it's not like the Reaper where you take the first shot, you face shift real quick, right? And then you avoid the upcoming six sequence bullets flying towards you, uh, or shells rather. Uh, in this case here, it also goes through last stand and it just hits you putts in a millisecond and the damage is done. Even if you like, you feel the hit and you face shift real fast, it's, it's too late. Damage has been done. And, and that at 800 meters range. Dude, this is an insane sniper build. And of course, being the newest robot, I'm not surprised to see the Pathfinder performing exceptionally well in pretty much any task you give this robot. Uh, but at the same time, we should probably say that um, this counter suppression that he has, you see the red shield around me right now? It's a charged counter suppression. You fire at me now, but you get suppressed. It, it shouldn't be there. Seriously, that should not happen. Because the robot clearly has way too much going for itself already without that. Um, and then the lockdown through walls per button press and the death mark, the lasting bonuses at the end for not just you, for everyone, it's just too much. It's just way too much. It's one of those examples where Pixonic has, unfortunately, as ever so often, just gotten completely overboard um, with what they give it, right? And, uh, yeah. So, not not really a well-balanced robot at that point. However, as a creator, it's still my job to give you various different setups with this build once it comes out. And this is one of them that I feel like you're gonna see from time to time on the live server. Um, maybe not necessarily with Gauss. I mean, you could r run this with any weapon, right? Any weapon would have this boost of performance, but the Gauss bypasses resistance and it hits hard in a split second. And that is what makes it so crazy at up to 800 meters range. Now, that was not even necessarily a sniper map. Let's go in on a sniper map and do the same thing there, right? See what it means to be caught at 800 meters by this setup. There is a, a reap, a crisis, pop, and uh, that was base damage. 100% base damage, regular damage, first shot done. No damage boosts running whatsoever yet. Nothing is charged and the crisis di dies almost in one hit. Now remember, this is 100% of the firepower from 250% or so that we can have later if we want to. So you can just see that this crisis would have not just died once, he would have died twice over if I had shot him by the time I'm fully charged. This is, this is literally how much damage output I have in this, in this charged shot. And I got this fully charged every six, seven seconds. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's about six seconds, maybe seven. Something between that, uh, that it takes to fully 100% charge the, uh, the Gauss. Boom, boom, boom. The Lynx, I first have to work through his resistance. That's why he's not taking damage just yet, right? Um, he has this initial force field. Um, but once that's dropped like it is now, he's gonna suffer sick damage. Look at this, okay? Bam, bam, bam. Okay, and that is, uh, I would say that is probably a max lungs right there. Looks like Mark III to me. Um, and again, our damage boost is still super low. <laughs> if this is maxed out at the end of the match, he would have not survived the second salvo past his reflector or his force field. It is insane. Look, I don't know, what is that? Oh, it's a Typhon robot. And I basically one-tapped him right there. This is a sick sniper and it's it's a no-brainer build where you can't do anything wrong. And that's my problem with it, right? If something is just good, okay. If something is just powerful, okay. The Okokochi was powerful and so on. And unfortunately, the Okokochi had also this problem. It was... Uh, it was a no-brainer like you could just hop into the Rojo Kochi and anybody no matter the skill level is gonna rock with it Right, and this is similar with this thing here uh, Although this thing even has more skills added to it. It has more abilities 
Uh, and I don't want to uh, just complain uh, uh, like like crazy here, but I feel like I would I would be uh, missing out on on uh, on what I, my job is if I didn't tell you that the balancing is off on, on this robot. I'm pretty sure it's not a surprise. You probably already knew that too. Um, but mm, it's just one of those examples that shows where Warbots is just not not doing very well. Things that Warbots should do better. Um, all right, so that right there, I feel bad. It's a kid, but I need to show the damage output against Titans, and they do have resistance. But I just ignore most of that. Now I see somebody coming up on the bridge. I don't want to necessarily go into a short-range brawl, especially since I didn't know what it was, and it's good that I didn't go into a brawl, because this is a Bedweird Titan. And from the looks of it, it's a really well-leveled Bedweird Titan too. Perhaps not level 150 maxed, uh, but it is, but it seems to be well-leveled. Um, wait, can't the Bedweird get to level 200? Uh, I don't know, uh, but I gotta check. Uh, look at the damage we, we have done. But now the thing is, you saw it looks like he's dead now, but no. Now his repair amps are stacked. So from this point on, nobody's going to deal damage to him anymore. No one. Again, this, this, when I always show you my Rook on the live stream, for example, and it kicks the whole match, or a Luchador that just can't be killed, same goes for a Bedweer. It's not necessarily the Titans that are impossible to be killed. They're strong. And their impact is probably a little too much for the game right now, in my opinion. But I feel like the real issue is the repair amps because they make it so that once they are stacked, you basically you can't deal any damage to any Titan anymore. And and that that I guess is kind of the problem. Um, so if it was just this Bedweer, he would be dead now. If it was just this Luchador, well, okay, the Luchador is dead because he didn't have the repair amps. You saw how it goes, right? Um, and this would have happened to the Bedware 2 without the repair amps. So, if you were to ask me for a look into my glass orb and to think what will happen next, I, I would imagine that Pixonic looks at these repair amps. I feel like they are probably going to do something about that soon because it seems like a very disruptive factor to have Titans in the game that can just freely roam around and there's basically nothing you can do to take him down. I, I've, I've, I feel like this is something Pixonic probably will take care of in some way or the other. Um, I, I feel like I've gotten a pretty good sense of how Pixonic works, and uh, I can imagine that this is something they'll do soon. Um, also, uh, in this case, I would even I would also support uh, doing something about the repair amps because um, while maybe uh, this is something that not everybody could foresee, right? Um, we can we can say many things that Pixonic does is to the fault of their own. For example, the Pathfinder, probably too powerful because they wanted it that way. But with the repair amplifiers, I would argue that maybe Pixonic couldn't even really foresee how this is going to turn out. Because I didn't see it coming. I saw the repair amps of something useful but not ridiculously broken. I think no content creator looked at this and were like, Oh my god, this is going to carry the match in the future. Because we probably didn't really see that happen so much or at least not to this full extent that has happened now so maybe Pixonic didn't even see that really coming and I um, I didn't either uh, but yeah that's why I'm saying I could imagine that they probably look at the repair amps going forward anyways you see we're still shooting at that bed weir, uh, and uh, yeah I mean we are doing a lot of damage we are fully charged by now Repair amps fully charged. Maximum kill amount is charged. I have the additional 40% death mark whenever I press the button to do it, right? So we're rocking the almost 300% damage boost on these Gauss. It's like three of these setups shooting this Titan at the same time, or two and a half, right? And yet this guy survived an onslaught of me doing that for like five minutes. <laughs> this is how crazy it is. It's so nuts. All right, this guy is in stealth. Let's see if we can put one last shot into him. All right, all right, all right, and fire. Boom. Yes, it looked like I connected with him. Nice. <laughs> so, that was a lot of damage. Pretty much, pretty sure this is the craziest sniper we have in the game right now. Tell me what you think about it, all right? So, I'll catch you in the next video, and Manny signing off. Bye-bye.